another beautiful morning all there welcome to the potter's gate online broadcast my name is isa phillips akintola wherever you are this morning wherever you'll be joining from wherever you are joining from whatever is your time zone i want to welcome you this morning once again to another session where we are going to be looking into the directions and the intentions of god the spirit of the lord is speaking expressly to his church and is bringing us to a deeper reality of his counsel we are moving into the deeper waters of the things of the spirit we are living realms of immaturity we are living the realms of the you know the the, the knees and the ankles and the waist of the things of god as it was revealed in the book of ezekiel we're coming now to almost to the shoulder point and very soon we're going to be swimming in the river of the spirit and i want to prepare our heart i want to really align us to that which the lord amen is emphasizing yesterday night i was supposed to come on you know just before eight uh the electricity was off so i couldn't make it but this morning i thought okay why, why don't we just you know uh, uh bring an introduction of this uh, uh, dimension of what I felt the Spirit of the Lord is, you know, steering my heart. And, and of course, that is the, actually the title of this uh, broadcast that I hope we'll be able to do on, you know, on a series, uh, uh, yeah, uh, basis. Or uh, I, I'm believing God that the Spirit of God will minister to me and grant me grace and strength, right, to bring this, uh, uh, you know, uh, word to the church. To, to create, if you will, a sense of, you know, uh, uh, direction and preparedness for uh, uh, for the saints so that it, what the Lord wants to do in this season and time, we can anticipate, we can amen, begin to align ourselves amen, and join into that which amen, is required of us. The, the, the Bible talk about in the book of Ephesians that the saints needs to be prepared and equipped for the work of their ministry. Of course, there are all kinds of, you know, dimensions that needs to be looked into, that needs to be uh, taken into cognizance as we get ourselves ready. We like it or not, the Lord is coming. And the coming of the Lord, of course, we have said this in time past, are in faces. God comes to us, amen, in the seasons of, you know, prophetic emphasis, in the seasons of, you know, prophetic realignment. There are things he wants to see accomplished and achieve, amen, for each new day, for each new season of our life. And I believe in my heart, amen, that there is there is a knocking at the door of the saints, or the, at the door of the church. There's a knocking, amen, within my heart and your heart, amen, that, you know, we, we've got to respond to. The Lord wants to come in. He wants to bring certain things, certain truth, amen. He's emphasizing certain things. And if you will, that is one of the reasons why, you know, for some time now, he's been speaking to us about purity. He's been speaking to us about sanctification. And I know many of us might have been challenged, amen, in those areas. Yes, what is going on is something that, amen, the Lord has allowed to open up, amen, our, our heart, to open up our life, to expose us to us so we can see, amen, that indeed we we need God more than ever before. We need his ways. We need, amen, uh, uh, his dealings, his plans and purpose. And many times we actually assume that, all right, uh, in this particular area of our life that we are ready, we are prepared for the things of God, all right, only to realize that we are truly not ready. So uh, the, 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 the past, you know, uh, uh, few, uh, uh, if you will, weeks or even months have been a time of test, has been a time, amen, of really you know looking into what we are made of amen the quality of our of our life of our faith the quality of you know or you know of of our sense of engagement in the things of the spirit it is important amen that we do not you know uh, uh abdicate this process or we don't cut shut this process it's important that we open up to the things of god excuse me <clears throat> It is important that we open up, amen, to the dealings of God, to the emphasis of the Spirit. It's important that we open up, amen, to what the Lord, amen, is, is seeking to 
bring out of our life, bring out of, amen, whatever situation or condition we, we find ourselves, amen, that may disqualify us, amen, in the greater picture of what the Lord, amen, or what the Spirit of God is about in this last day. So this is a time of great preparation. As we know, God has given us, amen, a, a, a decade to get ourselves ready and prepare for the next season, for the next, amen, unfolding of his prophetic uh, agenda in the earth and we want to be part amen we want to be part of amen the front line of whatever god amen is going to be unveiling of whatever god is going to be doing in the earth we want to be part of those amen that are marshalling the advancement of amen god's prophetic counsel so nothing is going to stop us nothing amen is going to hinder us we're not going to leave any stone on top so we'll continue to present ourselves amen unto god as a leader even sacrifice we will continue to yield ourselves we will continue to ask the lord amen to try us to find to see if there is any sin or iniquity in our life because if there is anything that can easily stop or hinder amen the move of god in the life of a people in the community amen is sin and of course sin is beyond just those big things that we look at we have to look at amen what the lord began to emphasize to me some days uh, some weeks ago amen spot wrinkle and blemish we have to look at those things amen these are sins that we can easily ignore these are things that we can easily you know uh, uh you know not pay attention to these are things that we can actually you know develop a sense of you know i'm better than you self-righteousness to the point that amen we forget amen the log that is in our eyes and we're looking at amen the the sawdust in other people's eyes so it's a day where we've got to be really uh, uh deliberate we've got to be deliberate in terms of dealing with amen our life we have to constantly look into the mirror of the word of god the word of god must continually show us amen who we are and what we are amen and we must not shy away from what we are seeing if what we are seeing does not reflect what amen christ is then of course we must go back to him and say lord there is this aspect of my life there is this area of my life amen that is not aligning to your will to your plans to your purpose so this, this is a time that god amen is really dealing with the issues of our soul because yes uh, you see the soul does not mind you amen manifest certain aspects certain dimension certain you know a uh, uh, character that that sound like that looks like god as long as you don't touch the nitty-gritty as long as you don't engage amen the things the spirit of god amen will have you engaged that will allow god amen to come and really amen take residence over your life the soul doesn't mind, amen, to share what sound like, what looks like God, amen, with, with his with his with his with his own desire and ability. And that's not what we want in this last day. We don't want that. We want to, amen, lay all that we have, amen, all that we are. We want to lay everything on the altar. We want Christ, amen, to be to be first, to be the Alpha and the Omega of our life. We want Him to be the one directing and motivating, amen, our 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 intentions, our agendas, amen, our desire, amen. Yes, we want to come to that point and place where the things of God, amen, can flow freely, amen, through our life. We want our life to be able to reflect that you know river of god amen that is streaming that is that is pouring you know uh, we, we you know uh, you know my son was just asking me before i you know i i came to broadcast he was reading the scripture where you know the, god says you know uh, uh, the, the the old heaven will pass away uh, you know the and and, and and a new one will be ushered in, or in, ushered in uh, you know the old earth will pass away and a new and he was saying uh does it mean that there's not going to be water again you know and uh, is the water going to be green well i didn't really answer him but as i was just you know about to broadcast you know the answer came you know the bible says that or right, that that there will be a river in the book of revelation the bible says there will be a river that will be flowing and that river will be for the healing of the nation so it's still water and of course i'm going to give him this answer uh, you know uh, there's there's going to be a river that will be flowing there's still going to be water but the difference amen in, in, in uh, the difference now is that this water amen is a water that can bring healing to the nation all right uh, jesus on that day bible says he stood in john chapter 10 he said is anyone thirsty People have been drinking water, all right? But he stood, he said, is there anyone thirsty? Of course, he didn't give them literal water, but what he was offering them, amen, was to quench their, their thirst. Is anyone thirsty? 
And that's what we want to do. Amen. We want to come to the point and place where we're not running after things all right, that are temporal. Is there anyone thirsty? Let them come and drink of me. Jesus said, he is a fountain, amen, of living water. So that's where we want to get to, amen. And I hope he's listening to me. I'm sure most of them he listen to my broadcast, so maybe he's also getting this answer. All right. You know, what we want is the living water. Living water. A water that can make things. The Bible says, wherever that river flow, amen, the, the, you know, the things come alive. Amen. Yes. Yes. The, the trees, the Bible says that, that, that this water flow through. Amen. The Bible says they bear their fruit in every month. This is the book of Revelation. And Revelation is not futuristic because that's how we look at the things of God. Oh, it's futuristic. It's already happening. Of course, amen. We will get to the finality of this word that will fully manifest. But right now, amen, we are moving. We are gravitating towards that dimension. And that's what we've been talking about, amen. Living the order of feeding from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I tell you, there is glory in that thing. There's, a, there's glory in feeding, amen, in the knowledge, all right? It gives you a sense of, you know, a, 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 a relevance, a sense of, you know, a authority and purpose. I know things. Have you seen people like that? Yes. But whatever they know cannot produce life. This is what we are looking for. The nations are in need of life. The nations are screaming there. I mean, all of the things happening around us today, amen, tells us something. People are looking for Messiah. And that's why anyone who wakes up tomorrow and says, I've got a solution, everybody gravitates towards that person. Once somebody comes and says, I've got an answer, we run there, all right? Once another church opens up and says, ah, I've got the, we run there. Because people are searching, they are looking for, all right? But I tell you, until we are full of Christ, we will never be able to really bring answer. We will never be able to, you know, profess solution to the issues of life. Because the issues of life are not things that we can deal with, amen, from the order, amen, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We cannot. We must have life in us. So when we talk about being steered by the Spirit, I'm talking about a point and a place where we, we, we allow the Spirit of God. You see, there's a point, there's a place you get to in your walk with God where your life, amen, begins to connect with the dimensions of God. All right? And, and, and I like to use that word dimension because there are dimensions. God reveals what he wants you to know, amen, at each interval of your walk with him. God shows you, he unveils to you what he wants you to, 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 to know, what he wants you to see, amen. You can know all of him. Nobody can know all of God. This, I mean, this, this father of ours is just too much, amen, in, in, in splendor, in glory, in power, in majesty, in majesty, in sovereignty i mean no human brain can comprehend him we can't contain him the heavens of heaven cannot contain him but we can press in we can we can have you know this unsatiable desire for him and guess what when we do that he wants to come into our space he wants to come. He says, I will come. I will sup with you. I will dine with you. There are things God wants to do in our life. But guess what? He's not going to force himself. You know, I was thinking about this, this concept. Being steered by the spirit. Being steered by the spirit of prophecy. I, you know, you look at scripture. You look at everything that Jesus did. They were all, amen, tagged to, you know, a prophetic word that has been, that has been proclaimed or declared about him. There is nothing, everything Jesus did, amen, you can find reference to them in the Old Testament. That is how detailed God is. <laughs> My point is, your life is so detailed. Your calling is so detailed. The things that God wants to do in your life is so, has been written, like he said in the book of Psalm, amen. You know my days. He, he knows your day and each day he has programmed, he has planned, amen, in the way that they must unfold. But guess what? If you are not living your life aligning to God's mind, aligning to God's desire and intention, how do you get to know, amen? How do you get to fulfill? How do you get to function? How do you even begin to talk about, amen, walking in purpose? Purpose can ignite your heart, but a purpose that you don't know, amen, may 
lead you astray. More than ever before, we need to connect to the heart of God. We need to understand what the Spirit, amen, is doing in our lives. Not just doing generally, but in our life. Where, where am I, amen, in the dealings of God? What is God saying to, to me? Just before, we began the, just before we began the broadcast, I said, one of the emphasis of God in the past couple of months or weeks, amen, is the call to purity. Is the call, amen, to sanctification. And whenever God begins to hammer on the issues, amen, of purity, the issues of, amen, aligning with his will, with his mind, having, amen, a pure heart, is because he's ready, amen, to use a people in the earth. He's ready, amen, to unveil, to reveal, amen, the next dimension of his intention because God will make sure that he gets his people ready because when the people are not ready and they want to engage the things of God, that leads to suicide, that leads to death, that leads to all kinds of things happening all right that you know you'll be wondering what's going on yes because people think well it's just about giftings no before the giftings purity must you know must prepare the ground amen we must have a heart that is totally focused on the lord we must have minds amen that are aligned to his will amen our life must be open unto him we must remove all the, have you have you noticed whenever god wants to come to the camp he tells the people to do what to go wash to go get themselves ready all right i'm coming down tell the people to wash tell them tell them amen to get rid of the accursed things amen whatever is in our life that is not uh, you know uh, 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 that, that, that will hinder or that will you know you know cause god to turn away we've got to get rid of them because when he comes into our space and there are all kinds of things amen that are, un, are, are unwanted amen those things can incur all kinds of wrath and we don't want to do that you want to get yourself amen ready and prepared before the guest comes so the Lord is speaking to us God is tearing our heart and is igniting our spirit these are the two words the spirit of the Lord has been stirring in my heart there's a stirring all right and there's there's there is an igniting just uh, just as I was preparing for this broadcast the Lord said to me all right I, I, I am I am stirring the fire that you were infused with in the beginning. I'm stirring that fire. And funny, I was thinking, I said, in the in the in the upper room, guess what? They were all given, they were all amen, they were all graced with their own unique amen fire. Like I always say, nobody shared a uh, 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 fire with another person. Everyone carried his own fire, and that fire represents all kinds of things. I know there are people that have taken the concept of, you know, uh, uh, looking at the work of the spirit, amen, from the dimension of, of, of fire to all kinds of, you know, uh, 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 levels that you see that wrong doctrine. But the thing is, we cannot take it away, amen. When the spirit, when the Lord, amen, you know, came to, you know, the church in the upper room, the Bible says like a clothing tongue of fire. Like a clothing tongue of fire, it fell upon each of them. Each of them. Nobody, no, no, no pastor was given a fire. And I said, Well, you can share to the to you know to everybody. I mean, this morning the Lord was reminding me of that. Everyone had his own fire, everyone was ignited. It means that the Lord, amen, believed in everyone. That 120 people that were in the upper room. They all had a fire. They all carry something. They all carry something that came from heaven. That's the point that I'm making. They all carry something. Amen. Regardless of how damaged they were. Regardless of what people say about them. Regardless of how they look. Amen. You know, this issue of, you know, uh, uh, well, uh, female are not allowed to preach in the church. They were female there. Amen. They had a fire. You see, when we begin to go back to the word of God and we allow the spirit of God, amen, to speak to us, we will stand, amen, with, 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 without doubt and proclaim and declare the mind of the Lord. You see, because this is not just, oh, what some, no, it's not about what somebody thinks or what somebody says. It's what God has said. What God has said should be, amen, our desire and our expectation. 
I will not I will not seek I will not desire something that is lesser than what the word of God amen has written 120 people were in the upper room yet we know there were leaders there and yet the Lord deems his feet amen to give each one of them fire remember God doesn't waste things he doesn't give things because uh, he likes your face. Oh, because, well, you're also there. Let's say, let me give it to you. No, when God gives, he gives because there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a mandate. There's a, there's a, there's an objective. Amen. There's something he, you see, that is what, amen, Pentecost is. And Pentecost, we say, amen, is about, is about the completion, amen, of, of that which God wants to do through a people. Pentecost, amen, represents, amen, 50. It, it's the point, is the place, amen, where we move into, amen, the tabernacle, where we move into, amen, the holies of holy, amen. After Pentecost, amen, is the feast of tabernacle. It's amazing that today we still do not fully understand the gifts, the ministry of Pentecost. I'm talking about being steered by the Spirit. You see, there is a Passover, there is Pentecost, then there is Tabernacle. The Tabernacle, amen, is the Feast of Feast. Of course, between those, there are other, you know, little feasts. There were seven feasts, but those seven feasts, amen, are divided into three, amen. Passover, Pentecost, and the Tabernacle. Now we are moving. You see, we can't move beyond. Oh, Lord, help me. We can't move beyond Pentecost. We cannot move beyond Pentecost. So we are entering into the holies of holy, into tabernacle. Earlier. We want to go beyond the veil. If we have not brought our soul to the place of death, if we have not, amen, crucified the soul, if we have not truly, fully embraced the cross, if we are not living via, amen, a life that is, that is, that is totally entrenched in the ministry of light, amen, and bread. Thank you, Father. All of this Many of the things that we are teaching today that we call, you know, depth, depth of revelation are still Pentecost. But we need the Pentecost because there is no way we can move on with God, amen, if we are not grounded, hallelujah. God does not believe in shunting. You know what shunting means, amen? You, you, you look for shortcut, amen? God doesn't believe in automatic promotion because you're so good in one class. Suddenly, I can throw to the next. No, no, no. You have to go through that class, amen, and take the next class. That is because as you see in the things of God there are there are no there are no you know presumption you cannot presume in the things of God no because today you can know I mean Peter know today the next day he is saying well I don't know him that's how it is in the things of the spirit. We have to go through each class. You have to go from, amen, the Passover, amen. Uh, excuse me, yes, you have to come from the Passover. Then you have to come into Pentecost. Passover, we will talk about, you know, death, and, you know, and in resurrection and all of that. Then we come into, amen, the reality of Pentecost, the church. For the past few decades, and maybe if you will, century, I, I, I've been roaming around Passover. And there are people today who have left Passover. We have brethren. We have people today who have really, fully entered amen, into, into the tabernacle. And that's why when some of these people speak, you know, we say they thunder. We, we look at them, we're like, what, what are they talking about? Because we cannot comprehend a revelation. We have not experienced in intimacy. We cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. When we have not experienced the God amen, of the spirit. When we have not experienced Christ. How do we begin to talk about the depth of the things? Paul talked about amen, depth in the things of God. Height, width, length, breadth. All of these dimensions, amen, we have to come into, but we have to, amen, take the class one step at a time, one day at a time. We have to pass the process. We have to crucify. It took, amen, amen, a, a Paul close to 20, 20 years for him to say, it is no longer I who lives. You see, that is not something you just declare in confession. That is a proclamation. That's an affirmation. That is a, a statement you make because you know that indeed you've been crucified. 
When you've been crucified, your appetite changes. When you've been crucified, hallelujah, your appetite changes. When you've been crucified, your diet changes. When you've been crucified with Christ, guess what? Your garment, your apparel changes. The way you appear, the way you look appears. When you've been crucified with Christ, guess what? Your identity is reformed, is transformed. Listen to this. It's not you talking about it. People will see it. When you see a crucified man or woman walking on the street, you will know. You don't need to, they don't need to put it on their forehead, I'm crucified. Everything about their life will tell the people, this one is crucified. That's, that's a living dead person walking. That's a dead man walking. That's a dead woman walking. You don't need to announce it. It's not how big your revelation is. It's hallelujah. It's what is emitting out of your life. Hallelujah. It's what is oozing out of you. Hallelujah. It's something about the glory of God that is manifesting. You can't fake it. God is calling us. Heaven is staring our hearts. And we have to respond to the staring of the spirit. We have to respond to the staring of the spirit. We just must respond to the staring of the spirit. We cannot, amen, pretend. We cannot, hallelujah, go hide. This is the day where the Lord is calling us, Adam, where are you? Wherever we are, we have to come out of our hiding. Many of us are hiding from all kinds of things. And you think, all right, that in your hiding, all right, that God doesn't see you. No, the enemy wants you to, 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 to hide. Of course, you see, that's what sin does. Sin always wants us to hide. Sin, hallelujah. Sin, sin, sin glories in secrecy. Sin glories in secrecy. I hope you understand that when I talk about sin, I'm not just talking about an act. I'm talking about the nature of sin here. Because we can talk about an act of sin. That doesn't mean hallelujah, that we have overcome sin. Because today you will deal with one. Tomorrow you are going to deal with another one. Amen. As long as we live on earth. We will continue to deal hallelujah, with the act. With the fruit amen, of the fallen nature. But we are talking about right now. Hallelujah, the, 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 the default character nature of sin in us. That's what Paul was talking about in the book of Romans. Amen. He said that the very thing. The good thing that I want to do, the things that I know that are righteous, that will please God that I want to do, those are the things that I find myself not doing. The very things that I don't want to do are the things my heart is being steered to us. That is the nature of sin that we have inherited. And that thing is locked into the soul of man. And that thing will hinder us, amen, from coming into the fullness of God, from attaining, hallelujah, you know, all of the things that heaven has ordained for us as our inheritance. I'll tell you something. How, why would you want somebody to take your inheritance? The estate was left for you to benefit you. All of these things God left for you. But somebody comes and tell you, sorry, <laughs> it doesn't belong to you because uh, your name is not found amen, in, the, in, the, in, in the testament. You say, no, I know who I am and I know my father. I've got a proof. You have to, you will fight that thing earlier to, to the bitter end to, to claim what belongs to you. There's a battle right now taking place. Amen. There is a battle taking place. The enemy does not want us to come into the fullness of what the Father has ordained. Many of us are living below. We are living below, amen, our inheritance in redemption. Why? Because we have allowed some ungodly, you know, perverted, amen, you know, frivolous life and attitude, amen, and belief system, amen, to govern our lives. We love sin. We love the nature of sin. It gives us temporal fulfillment, temporal pleasure. I'm saying this because I was there also. Listen to this. This is something, no matter how righteous, how holy anybody thinks, as long as you're born into this world, amen, that nature, you will have to fight it and deal with it. You will have to, you see, the difference between those who have fought it and have overcome it is that they came to the end of themselves. They said, is either this thing kills me or I kill you. I'm not going to, amen. 
I'm not going to allow you to see the end of my life. I have a dest I have I you know I have a destiny to attain. I have an inheritance waiting for me. And this is the path that the Lord, amen, has chosen for me to get there. And I'm not going to allow you to stop me. You see, sin doesn't care if you are <laughs> the most popular person. You are the most influential person. No. Sin will create an opportunity for you to fall. I'm talking about your sinful nature. I'm talking about my sinful nature. It will create the right environment. You see how it created the right environment in the garden? Did God actually say? It will cause you to challenge what God has said. You will look at the things of God and begin to doubt. Did God actually say... Uh, 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 um, 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 uh, you know, um, um, uh, uh, a man and a woman cannot, you know, s you know, live together without getting married. I is that actually? Is that actually what God says? Of course, that's what God says. How would you be living with somebody you're not married with? Of course, that's what God says. Yes, in a day where we call, you know, sin all kinds of, we give it all kinds of name. We, we, you know, we, we paint it with all kinds of color. We've got to, we've got to be brutal, amen, with the, with the, with the fallen Adamic nature because that thing will stop you. Listen to this. It's not just going to stop you from going to heaven. It will stop you from reaching your full potential. It will hinder you from entering into the full reality of God. Listen to this. You don't even know what you want. You don't know, amen, what the Lord has deposited in you. You're still being deceived. You're still being blind, hallelujah. You're still being, being captured by the lies of the enemy. You're, you're still being, hallelujah, you're, you're, you're still being influenced by all kinds of things, amen, that, that is charming you until you begin to live life like certain men and women that we read of. In the scripture. Hallelujah. Yes. You see. Joseph to me is one a good example. Joseph to me is one good example. Amen. Of a man who understands God's purpose for his life. And who, how, and who will not allow anything within or around him. Amen. To stop him from achieving that purpose. There's nothing that can easily. I mean. It. I hate to say this, but I just have to use this example again. I shared a, a, a video clip not too long ago about, you know, the Hillsong Church, the, the, the pastor, how, you know, uh, uh, um, I think he has stepped down right now. I'm not sure for how long where he stepped down from, you know, from pos position of leadership because there was somebody in this, one of his key leaders who went into all kinds of, you know, sexual issue with another lady. And they just treated it as if it's nothing. In fact, almost like hiding it. You see, that's what I keep saying. That, that there's a desire. That there, there is a picture. There's an image that you that you have in mind that you want to attain. And if you go for that thing, <laughs> there's no way you will not be battling with certain unnecessary issues and battles. Once you, know, you begin to say, "I want to have ten thousand, hundred thousand member in my church." How do you handle those people? Even if, amen, you yourself, amen, you live, you want to live a righteous life. But guess what? You have all kinds of people coming. Once you have a desire to want to be big, but you're not ready to, you know, to, to, to establish, amen, the principle of, you know, kingdom-based discipleship. You see, you're going to accommodate all kinds of things. I mean, I, I, I didn't know all of this. When I keep telling people, I don't recommend Hillsong and all of this. No, I don't, I don't do that. No, no. It's just something that I, it, it just, to me, is just show. We use God. We create, you know, an emotional environment. People cry and people, you know, but we're not touching the spirit of God. Because the, touching the spirit of God is not just about emotion. Doctrine must be established. Amen. Character must be there. Discipline must be there. You must be principal in the things of God. But you build this thing. See, like I always say, the devil doesn't mind us build big things. He doesn't care. Didn't, is that not what he said to Jesus? Just bow to me. The glory of this world has been given to me. 
I will give them to you. Just bow to me. Can you imagine? So the devil will give a man the glory of this world if only Jesus can just bow and worship him. Did you see what the devil wants in your life? Who do you worship? Who do you worship? What do you worship? You see, we pay lip service to God. Hallelujah. God is my father. We, we know all the right scripture. All right. But at the end of the day, who do we worship? What do we worship? Some of us this morning are worshiping our time. Shaman for some of us, amen. Saturday morning, we worship, amen, our you know, our, you know, our size. We must do all, you know, go to all the whatever we go to, you know, and try to fit in and fit up, amen, and look so nice and that's good. Bodily exercise, the Bible says, amen. It profits, but it profits little. But spiritual exercise, hallelujah, is profitable to all things, in all things. You cannot work with God if you are not determined to want to live against the earth, to want to swim against the tide. If you want to live for God, hallelujah, you want to be a person of the spirit, you want to be stirred by the spirit, you want to be motivated by the spirit, ah, then you have to hate the values of this world. That's what it means to hate the world. Hate their value. Hate, hate their identity. Hate their culture because their culture, amen, is toxic. Their identity, amen, is compromised. Is Babylon and they know it. Many of them know that they're going to hell. They already know it. They, they talk about it openly. You have to make up your mind. This morning, once again, the Lord reminded me some things and I said to God, it's all about you. Nothing else. I have nothing else to live for. I'm not living for a ministry. Ministry must flow from a position, amen, of relationship with him. Ministry, amen, is, is, is carried out from the ascended realm. You cannot do ministry, amen, because you have an idea, because you feel is something, because you, you know, you, 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 you just speak something in the spirit. No, ministry flows from above. It flows from the presence of God. It's not just a calling, amen. It's a relationship. Let me, let me say that again. Ministry is not just a calling, it's a relationship. And nothing in the world must tamper with that relationship. Or else, the Bible says, and Samson did, Samson did not know that the Lord has left him. Or else you will carry on doing ministry. Meanwhile, you've left God behind or God has left you. I'm talking about how do we maintain, amen, a life whereby we are constantly being steered by the Spirit. When I look at the life of Jesus, you see how he was steered, he was moved, motivated by the Spirit. He didn't live his life, amen, at his own script. He lived his life and functioned based on, amen, the things the Father has hemmark, highlighted for him. Whatever you're doing today, is it being steered by the Spirit? Is it being motivated by the Spirit? Or are you just flowing with the flow? You're just f going with the Joneses, doing your own thing. Amen. Yeah. Is that what you're doing? Or you really, you see, when you live a life that is directed by the Spirit, the first thing, amen, that you're going to, that you're going to, that, that you're going to have, amen, is peace. The peace of God. Amen. Will be, will be umpering your heart. You will have a sense of connection. You will have a sense of contentment. You will, you will feel fulfilled and content no matter what. Amen. You don't have around you. You will feel this sense of, thank you Lord. Rest. But when you don't have God in your life, I'm telling you, no matter what you have in your account, no matter what people promise, no matter what's going on, you, you, your eyes is all over the place. You see, you, you, it's easy to identify where we are. We have to continually remind ourselves as the world continues to, you know, you know, uh, 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 nose dive, as the values of life, society continue to drop, we have to, amen, be determined. We have to be deliberate, amen, 
in living a life, amen, that is mountainous, in living a life that is climbing the hill of the Lord. We have to be determined to, to, to swim, to ride against the tide. We have to be determined, amen, to keep the forth, hallelujah, to press further into the mind of God. So when the wall says, let's go this way, you must understand what the Spirit is saying. So you don't follow. You follow the voice of the Lord. I'm talking about being steered by the prophetic spirit. What steers us, amen, in the prophetic is the will of God. We want to do the will of God. To do the will of God, we have to know his will. To know his will, we have to be intimate with him. To be intimate with him, we have to love his word because his word introduces us to him. His word introduces us to him. He's giving us his written word. Secondly, we have to be intimate with the spirit, with his Holy Spirit. It's from there that they begin to illuminate your mind. It's from there, amen, that they begin to show you things, highlight things in your life. When you live life from that point, there's no disappointment in your life. There's no failure in your life. You know that all things are working together for your good. Why? Because you love the Lord. Loving the Lord is not just about getting something from Him. It's about pleasing Him. It's about honoring Him. Hallelujah. It's about bestowing upon Him what He deserves as a Father. When you do that, Things will open up to you like that, like this. Just open up to you. You will know things. Nobody can deceive you. Nobody can come and lie to you. Nobody can pretend around you. You see, the path to the things of God, the Bible says, is straight and is narrow. You have to come to a point where you decide. This is how I want to live my life. Not because of what I'm going to get. But because I know it is the right thing to do. There are two different things. Doing something because it's right. Amen. It's totally different from doing it because I can get something. You see, I, I, I try to tell my children. Yeah, you do good things. I reward you for it. Yes. But don't just do so that you can get a reward. Because when you establish that kind of relationship, then they only do things because they want to get a reward. And therefore, they will no longer do it because it's good. No. You've got to do things because it's good. You've got to do things because you know it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do in the morning to wake up knowing that, hey, the Lord once again has given you a brand new day. Amen. You honor him. You glorify him. Hallelujah. You give him the first, the, you know, the first fruit of that day. Hallelujah. You give him the first fruit of that day. Your lips, your, 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 your mouth open in praise, in adoration. It's called a living sacrifice. It's the right thing to do to say that, hey, the work of God, amen, is in need. I'm going to support it. Somebody say, well, I'm not led. How can you be led? Bible says, you know, it's right. To, it's, this is the right thing to do. You do it. Go out of your way to do it. Not do it and blow the trumpet. You see, if it's not for me, then you have received your reward. There are things we ought to do, amen, not because we want a reward, but because we know that's what the Lord will have us do. You see, when you begin to live like that, your righteousness now begins to surpass the righteousness of the Pharisee. Do you know the Pharisees have a righteousness? Their righteousness is, is, is reflective in their, in their good deeds. Yes. That's still, unfortunately, where many of us are. Our good deeds. We've got to go beyond amen, these good deeds. We have to re really connect with our heart. When it becomes heart to heart, face to face, aha, then you're talking about going on with the Lord. Then you're talking about the Lord steering you. Then you're talking about coming to a place, amen, of divine establishment. Then you're talking to, amen, you're coming to a place where the Lord can begin to talk to you, amen, face to face as he talked, amen, with Moses. 
The people the Lord speak to, he speak to them in parable. He said, but you that you are within the kingdom, I speak to you plainly. But even the plain language we don't understand. Why? Because we do not have a relationship. Our relationship is based on the bargain. Lord, if you can do this for me, then I'll do that for you. Come on, friends. It's time we know that we are born to live for God, to please him, to honor him, to glorify him. And he's given unto us a gift called the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy, amen, houses God's eternal prophetic purpose for our life. The gift of prophecy, amen, is a chronology of books, amen, that defines our purpose and assignment on earth. When they open your eyes to that book and you begin to read it, amen, you will know the things that heaven has earmarked for you. You will know the things that God has spoken regarding your, your children, regarding, amen, your spouse, regarding, amen, your loved ones, regarding the church, the body. You will find your place within the body of Christ and you will function, hallelujah, as a regent in the advancement of the kingdom of God. The kingdom is first within you. Before you can represent the things of God out there, it must first become a man, a living reality, an experience in you. We interact with God, yes, you know, you know, uh, uh, we, we, within our spirit. Yesterday I was saying that the Lord was asking me a question. So what kind of a spirit do you want? In other words, how would you want me to brand your spirit in this last day? Lord, you know, but do you have an idea? Because yes, God knows all things, of course. But do you know what God, amen, has ordained and designed for your life so you can function in, in, in those things? You can't function in a gift that you're not aware of. What kind of a life do you want to live? What kind of a spiritual life do you want to live? Do you want to be in the 30 fold? Or do you want to be in the average? What everybody is doing, what everybody is saying. Or do you want to be at the forefront? Do you want to be in that dimension beyond average? Are you pressing to us the fullness of life in Christ Jesus called the underfold? Are you coming into? Do you want me to bring you to maturation? Do you want me to bring you to fullness? Where you can see all things clear. Not seeing men walking like trees. You want to, do you want me to bring you to, amen, the stream where you are washed? Your eyesight has been restored. You can see things with clarity. You're not deceived. There are powerful prophetic, amen, words that we need to look into. Speaking into today, into this season in time, into this moment we have been brought into. What is God's heart for this period in time? As all kinds of things are happening around our world, politically, economically, socially, what is God's voice to you? Because it's that voice, amen, that will adjust you, that will position you. It is what God is saying earlier that will enrich your spirit, amen, to remain, to abide. That you can be earlier, yes, a slave in a foreign country. But if God has ordained you, amen, to be the next queen, amen, you don't allow the identity of a slave girl, amen, to hinder you, to stop you. And you don't allow, amen, that, that you know, uh, uh, disenfranchisement, which most time we give in to. Many of us are aware that we are disenfranchised. But how many people know that there's a way out? Many South Africans, amen, black South Africans, colored South Africa, they know that they are disenfranchised. But how many know, amen, that there is actually a way out through connecting, amen, with the spirit of God, amen. Not just going to church, not just doing all those religious things, but saying to yourself, I can, amen, be rebranded. The word comes again. I can be rebuilt. Amen. I can, amen, be renovated. Hallelujah. I can be repurposed. 
Hallelujah. I can reconnect to God's eternal prophetic, you know, mandate for my life. My life can, amen, carry a sense of purpose and destiny and I can fulfill it regardless of my environment. That's what I'm talking about, you see. I'm very proud of who I am, where I come from as a Nigerian, as a Yoruba person. But guess what? I am not limited. No, I'm not disenfranchised. But whatever anybody says about where I come from. No, it doesn't limit me. Because if any man be in Christ, that's the criteria. If any man be in Christ, not with Christ, not going to church. Not be lay, 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 lay hands on by the apostle or the prophet. If any man be in Christ, that's the criteria. If any man be in Christ. And any man means your spirit. So we're not talking about the male man. If any man be in Christ, if that spirit is in Christ, <clears throat> that spirit is in Christ. You can be in the Amazon. You can be in the Kalahari. You can be in, in, in the Sahara Desert somewhere. You can be way down in, in, in Mexico under in, the, 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 the drug dens. Or, or you can be way down somewhere in Nigeria or where girls are, you know, are being trafficked. Come on. Wherever you may be, listen to this. If you can find yourself, your spirit in Christ, you can be changed and be transformed and be catapulted from where you are to the place that heaven has ordained you. That's the story of Esther. inexhaustible energy and zeal to achieve. Why? Because you, you locate yourself. Not because you talk your way into, I can do it. No. Positive, positive confession is not enough in this last day. You have to relocate your identity to your originality in Christ Jesus. Naturally, the things we have, we have done and we are doing they look impossible. They sound impossible. Naturally. The things. When some people watch. Watching me on air now. They will think. Wow this guy. Ooh. But they don't know. It has taken 12 years of consistency. 12 years of building and building and building. And yet we have not even started. We're just scratching the surface. We're just beginning. I'm saying that every day of your life, you wake up, you determine, this is who I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My life is sourced in Christ. I live by the authority and the wisdom that is flowing from Christ. I am rooted in Christ Jesus. I am not dry because I am planted by the stream of living water. I proclaim that this day that my life has fallen in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage in Christ Jesus. I declare that this day the light of God shines over me. Therefore there is no darkness in my life. I am healed. I am transformed. Restore. Hallelujah. You proclaim it. You declare who you are. You let the devil know. You let principalities and power know. And then you go out there and represent Christ. You will see that even in a foreign land, a foreigner can become a prime minister. A foreigner can become the queen. That is no respecter of man. But it's a respect of our principle in true identity. Do you know who you are? There's a spirit in man. Elu said, the spirit of God gives him inspiration. Not what you read, amen, in Harvard's, you know, uh, 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 you know, business school. This good, I read them too. But it is the spirit of God that steers. You can read things and forget. But when the spirit of God, hallelujah, amen, is allowed to use what we have read, to use, amen, you know, our hard work, oh, we can do much more. We can do the impossible. Is that not what the Bible says? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nothing shall be impossible to them, hallelujah, who believe, 
When you believe and your belief, amen, aligns with the right spiritual philosophy, with the right mindset, amen, with the right doctrinal foundation, with the right spiritual footing. When your belief, hallelujah, is aligned to what God says about faith, I tell you, God will make sure that heaven and earth cease, but his word will come to pass. <laughs> But if you're playing games with the things of the spirit, you're going to continue for the next 20, 30 years. Like the children of Israel. They thought they, thought they were, you know, uh, they were trying to be fast with the things of God. Listen to this. God allowed them to be roaming the same mountain. Joshua, go tell them you've dwelt too long on this mountain. In three days time, you're breaking the camp. You're going forward. You ready? He said, when you see the priest of the Lord carrying the ark of God on their shoulder, you follow. Friends, God is giving us a matching order. It's a brand new day. The kingdom of God, amen, is moving further again. Are we ready to, to scaffold and move to the next intentions of God for our life? We cannot move. There are weights in our life. We cannot move if there are weights. The Bible says, cast off every weight and sin that can easily beset you. Yes. I told you, I'm just basically introducing to you what we, what we intend to begin to look into in this concept, amen, of being steered and being ignited. Don't let your spirit die don't let the fire die don't let the enemy talk you amen, to compromise and give up a generation is waiting we are coming to the place of the birthing and we need all the strength all the skill and the grace of a midwife to give birth So as we continue to allow God to, to steer our heart, to speak to us, to minister to us, to show us, amen, the right prophetic, amen, direction and intention of the Lord for this brand new day, we have to comply. We have to, we have to yield. We have to continually, amen, interact with our mind, with our soul, with our faculty. You have to constantly, amen, bring your soul under the authority and the influence of the ministry of truth, of God's word. You have to continually speak to yourself of what you hope to become, what you aim to become. Don't fold your hands and say, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. No. No. God has given you the power to define your course as you live on the course of his word. As you live on the footing of his word. You have the power to shape. Amen. Yes. The next reality of your life. Of your home. Of your family. Of your ministry. As you constantly live in the authority. In the instruction. In the direction. Amen. Of God's will. Of God's counsel. As you continually allow yourself to be educated and re-educated hallelujah in the school of the kingdom as you continually enroll yourself amen in the school of christ and you continually apply the principles that you're learning that christ is teaching you you apply them as a good disciple you will emit the life of god you will reveal the intentions of God. Your life will carry the spirit of God and you will manifest it because indeed when God says I'm pouring out my spirit, amen, in the last day upon all flesh, you've got to understand it is those who are ready. It is those who have prepared themselves, amen. Yes, will receive the outpouring of the spirit. God is pouring himself out, but nobody's nobody's receiving. People are doing their own thing. God is pouring out. We have to be ready to receive the outpour. Because when the spirit of God is at poor, direction will come. Instruction will come. Realignment will come. Yes, guidance will come. Discipline will come. Yes, blessings will come, of course. Healing will come, yes. Restoration will come. But so earlier is discipline. 
so is, hallelujah, the spirit of authority. We will comply with the instruction and guidance of the Lord. When the spirit of God is poured, we'll become like that house that is built upon the rock that cannot be shaken or moved. Regardless of the storm, regardless of how terrible, bad the weather may be. We, 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 have, we, have, we, have, we have determined, we are determined to become a conduit, a true reflector of God's glory. Come on, friends. This is what I want to share with us this morning. Like I said, I just want to stay your heart. Your heart. I want to stay your heart to believe, to dream the dreams of God, not your own dream. Go throw your dream away and say, God, I want to, yes, find myself. In the plans and purposes that you have ordained for me. I want the, 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 the original blueprint you've ordained for my life. Everything that you need is within that blueprint. If God has ordained for you to have three children, you're going to have it. If God has ordained one, amen. If God has said, okay, you, you're going to have this man, this, or you're not going to marry. Everything, all the grace to become. And find joy and fulfillment in what God has ordained for you is in the divine, amen, cr chronicles of God's prophetic counsel for your life. Jesus lived not one day less, not one day more of God's prophetic, of the Father's prophetic intention for his life. Everything he did, he did to the letter of the word that have been established, that has gone forth even before he was born. Isaiah was prophesying about Christ, amen. 400 years, is it 400 years or four, you know, 4,000 years before Jesus was born? Isaiah, amen. See, that's the spirit of prophecy. That's what I'm talking about. Men who saw things about the next generation and they proclaim them. You see, when God shows you things and reveals things to you, you're not afraid to declare. I was speaking to one of our dear sisters, in fact, very dear sister to me, because, you know, uh, uh, for a long time, I lived in the life, uh, in the house of this uh, wonderful woman, uh, with her two sons, an elderly woman, but wonderful, wonderful. I mean, God has blessed me with beautiful, beautiful, spirited people. I've been trying to get across to her for, you know, for, for, for some time now, for almost a year or thereabout, you know, I couldn't. So just a few days ago, you know, I, I saw a missed call from WhatsApp. I saw a missed call. I'm like, oh, but it's, this is a number. So I called her back. So we had a long chat and, you know, just exchanging pleasantry, you know. Thank God for what God is doing in our life and the children and all of that and all of that. All grown up, finished university, one of them working in the bank and, you know. <laughs> so... So, you know, just as we're about to answer, I said, okay, so where are you guys living now? So she told me, you know, very far place from where we used to, you know, uh, uh, live. Like I said, in fact, it was from a house that I came down to South Africa. I was living in a house. God has blessed me with such wonderful people. People who really know God, who serve God and are really willing to serve God. What a woman, what a, what a grace. What a mother in Israel. That's who she is. Mrs. Okafo. That's her name. That's her son name. And uh, so, so she said, no, I'm, 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 we're now staying with, uh, um, um, with in my, my sister's house. The sister, she's well to do. You know? So she said, no, we're now staying in my sister's. I said, how? He said, remember the prophecy you gave years ago. You told me. Because of the things that I have, you know, I have done for you and how you have housed me. <laughs> he said, you said to me that somebody will give you a house that you did not build. You will live there. I said, well, I can't even remember. He said, well, my sister in a, in a big building, right? She gave us a flat. We're living in a flat just like that. He said, well, that prophecy came to pass. I said, the Lord is good. You know, you declare things. There are things that I've said that I proclaimed years ago that I'm beginning to see them now being fulfilled. You see, prophecy does not have to come 
in accordance to your own time timetable god has his own timetable every prophecy has his own timetable has his own timing and that's where many of us miss it or some of us say ah that man he gave a wrong prophecy no you got the timing wrong and sometimes even the prophet can get the timing wrong you can give a prophetic word amen and you say by this time tomorrow and god say well you know tomorrow to me it's next year <laughs> So it is important, all right, that even when you're giving prophecy, that you know you you apply wisdom, you let wisdom guide you. Lest people say you're a liar. Meanwhile, you never lied, but you got the timing wrong. You spoke as you are led by the Spirit, amen. But you said things you're not supposed to say. That's why even in the in the prophetic in a, a ministry. It is important that we continue to purge. You see, and this is the reason. You see, the reason why I'm talking the way I'm talking, the reason why I'm sharing the things that I'm sharing is not because I want to bash certain people. It's because I know what is coming. I know what God wants to do. Listen to this, friends. The next batch of leaders that will be emerging. Have you noticed right now what is going on in Africa? It's like God is beginning to bring some new batch of leaders. Example, you know, the present president of you know uh, 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 um zambia you can see that this is not a, a, a no-nonsense man this is not the man you can push here and there he was speaking yesterday i was listening to him he said no no he said the reason why we did not take you know this uh plane i guess uh the, the former president must have bought a plane he said the reason why he said based on principle the amount the body's plane was too much and all of that and it was explaining to you know to the press and i'm looking and i said wow god i pray grace and strength i pray this man will continue in this because for for once we need leaders who are principled who will tell you is wrong and when they mean is wrong they mean he said for principles sake. he said we could have just taken the you know the the you know the the, the jet and fly to the u.n or whatever and fly to washington he said no but we took him a a a a, 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 a what they call it a business you know class you know a uh, uh, plane so for principle said i said this is the kind of man africa need we need men like this you see as a believer we have to be principle if you are not principle you will fall for anything so when you know what ministry god has given to you, you see this is a prophetic ministry this is a man a prophetic ministry established amen on the footing amen of prayer and intercession amen well endowed, amen, and desiring to continue to journey in the entire counsel of God's word. You see, we are as much as possible to be balanced. Don't want to be, you know, swayed by one end. No, we want to stay, amen, in the pendulum. You want to stay in the middle of the pendulum, amen. Once, amen, that 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 swing, amen, over, over you know, over slide to to you know to an extreme, it becomes an error. You want to maintain, amen, a balance. I believe in healing. I believe in prosperity. Amen. I believe in deliverance. I also believe, amen, in in the coming of Christ. I believe in all these things. But I, I take all this thing, amen, in the full revelation of Christ. And I seek to balance it by what God says in his word. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't promote one aspect of truth above the other. I believe the Lord, amen, that once Christ is the center core, the center focus of what we're doing, you will know that at least nothing, nothing will go wrong. We pray that nothing will go wrong. As long as we have a conscience that is forever being cleansed and, and washed, amen, that the blood of Jesus is speaking constantly on our behalf, amen. Yes, as long as we continually allow the word of God to speak to us, and when the word speaks to us, regardless of how we feel, we respond. I tell you, the Lord will continue to keep us. It's not by might, it's not by power. So this is what I believe. This is what, you know, I, I, I know God is doing. So this woman said, no. This is this that prophecy you gave came to pass. We live, we've been living there, me and my children. God is good. God's word indeed is faithful. God is faithful to his word. But are we faithful? Are we are we are we seeking to? I'm not saying compare your faithfulness with that of God, but I'm saying, come on. We're called to be faithful. To be faithful means to be committed to what you believe, to what you know. That's what it means to be faithful. That amen. I can count on you. That come 
whatever tomorrow i can count on you i can knock on your door and you will open you won't say ah oh, no 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 today i'm not gonna allow you in because i don't feel i don't <laughs> regardless of how you feel you know you need to do what you need to do that's what we're talking about that is the ministry of faithfulness and may god continue to empower his church to be faithful in this last day because indeed we can do amen with men and women who are committed to the things of God. We can do, amen, with men and women, amen, who are faithful to the things of God. Amen. Not people who allow their feelings to drive them. Today, crucify him. Tomorrow, Hosanna in the highest is the son of David. Next tomorrow, crucify him. No, we cannot build a lasting legacy. We cannot build the things of, of, of the spirit, amen, on, on faithfulness. We have to remain faithful. Faithful to the cause. We have to remain faithful, amen, to the calling, to the mandate, to the vision. We have to remain faithful to the cause of the kingdom. You know, I keep asking myself, if I don't do what I'm called to do, somebody else will take my place. I don't want no stone to replace me. While I have breath in me, while I have breath in me, I will continue to proclaim until my dying days. I will continue to declare until my last breath i will continue to declare you know i remember i used to watch uh rayon bonke before he died i mean at his old age fragile you see the man he is still broadcasting i mean i was touched by this man at his old age you would think he would be resting somewhere maybe just reading his bible he still comes with his, you know, frailty. This was a man who went all over the world preaching. I mean, that man did a lot for this generation. He's an evangelist. I'm not an evangelist. I'm a prophet, but he's an evangelist. But I honor the grace and the gifts of this man. <clears throat> there are many like that. They didn't say, well, what is this internet thing these people are doing? Is this ministry? He knew that the internet, God allowed it. God brought that in, amen, to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. He was using it. That became, amen, his platform of preaching to millions. At his old age, this man will still come and declare until he finally died. That is a general that we want to emulate in the things of God. Friends, are you fired up this morning? Don't let no sin stop you or hinder you. Amen. And, 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 and block the things God can do with your life. Your life is a seed. Your life ought to be a water. Pour that for the healing of the nations, friends. Don't let no man, don't let no circumstance, don't let no situation, don't let the issue of I have or I don't have stop you. Continue Continue to sound the trumpet. Continue to declare. Continue to blow that shofar. Continue, amen, to speak the word of God. Take the Bible, amen. Preach the word of God to yourself. Declare who you are. Don't, 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 don't let, amen, sorrow drown you. The enemy is very good. I've, I've, I've told you before, you hear men of God. That become depressive. How can a man of God become depressive? But guess what? I know what it means to be depressive. Because if you if you go on that path. If you allow life. Particularly domestic issue. Amen. Challenges. Lack. Need. Amen. To, 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 to get too close to you. And begin to wear on you. I'm telling you. You will go into a depressive mode. I've, I, was, I was in that position some time ago. Then you begin want to take you, you want to feel God. I'm I'm done. I'm tired. Surround yourself with people that can motivate you, that can encourage you. Call a brother or sister that can pray with you. If you can't get hold of me, <laughs> pray with me. And of course, many of you, you know, you can get hold of me. I'll, I'll pray with you. I'll encourage you. That's what that that's what I do. That's where I am. Many people think my ministry is just on the no no no. Most of the ministry, amen, are, are done amen, at the back end. At the back end. I have a one to one. You, you know you have, amen, a, a, in a, an open door. You, you, you have an, I have an open policy with you guys, amen. And anyone out there, as long as you know you're not coming to take my time and telling me all kinds of things that are not aligned. Or else I'm just going to just, you know, yeah. That's the truth. There are people that just want to take your time. They just want to 
you know, waste your energy. They don't want to be healed. They don't want to be restored. They don't want to listen, but they just want to say, Oh, what? I also know Isaiah Phillips. In fact, I call him. People like that, I don't answer them. Because there are people like that. But if you're serious, you really want change, then that's the right man. This is the right man to call. If you really want change, because I'll tell you the way it is, with love, of course. But don't let the enemy put you down, tell you, 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 you know, you, you, you've reached the end of your life. You're just beginning. Tell him you're just, listen, he can hear. He's got ears. And that's why he comes and whispers things to you. Amen. Reject those things. Stand your ground. Proclaim who you are. Read about who you are. Find your identity in the word of God. Find your mission in the word of God. The Bible says, as they were praying, amen, as they were praying and worshiping God with fasting, the spirit spoke, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work that I've assigned. There's a work assigned for you. You're not safe just to go to heaven. You're safe to change, to transform, to heal, to reform creation. Come on. We want to raise leaders. End time leaders. Leaders that are equipped. Men and women. Young people. You are not too young to be used of God. How old was Mary when she gave birth to the Messiah? How old was Esther? How old was Joseph? How old was our Lord Jesus Christ? So it's not about age. It's about compliance to the demand of the spirit. It's about yielding yourself. It's not about saying, oh, well, I'm, I'm still young. I can still run around. I can still do my own thing. No, Jesus at the age of 12 was committed to the cross, to the business of heaven. You know, sometimes they tell, oh, no, you see, you're still young. Come on. Why, 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 what's all this fuss? What? No, come on. Why are you sleeping in church? Why, why are you supposed to sleep in the brothel? We want a generation who understand what is at stake. There's a world, the enemy wants to take down to hell. And they're no longer hiding it. They've made it clear that this is war. They're going to fight you, fight your children, fight your husband, fight your wife, fight your, your, your job. They will fight amen, your ministry. The devil is not gone at the days where the devil does it, you know, you know, somewhere hiding. No, now it's open. So you've got to wake up earlier and also, you know, roll off your sleep and say, yes, come, have my day. Make my day. Lord, we want to thank you this day. You're stirring our heart. You're igniting the fire once again. You're bringing us to the place of newness. You're bringing us to the place of perfection, maturity, mature saints. Thank you once again this morning. We proclaim and we declare, Lord. That your grace, O oh God, will continue to uphold us as we lift up the banner of your kingdom and righteousness. The word says, of the increase of your kingdom and peace, there shall be no end. We declare this morning, O oh God, that may your kingdom continue to have inroad in our lives, in our space. May your will this day, O oh God, be done. I proclaim in the name of Jesus that we are strong in Christ. We are established, built up to the glory of your holy name. That nothing will stop us. Thank you, Lord, for the building, yes, of, nat of your nature, your character. Yes, being formed in us. Christ being formed in us. Thank you, Lord, for, yes, the government of your kingdom upon our shoulder. We carry this day in the name of Jesus, the ark of your presence. We wear the air for and we declare that we are priests. We are priests, priests of the Most High. A priest not after the order of the old ironic Levitical order. A priest pattern after the order of the Zadok, of the Melchizedek generation. A priest established in Christ Jesus, our chief high priest, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. 
Today we declare in the name of Jesus that we take our place and we proclaim, Lord, may your kingdom come into our lives, into our space. May your will find inroad, oh God, into every dimension of our being, that from the crown of our head to the very sole of our feet, anoint us once again. The fire, oh God, yes, that you give them in the beginning. Lord, we rekindle that fire. It was their emblem. It was their seal. It was their identity. That wherever they go, as long as that fire continued to burn, no man, no system could stop the church. Lord, this day we declare, we rekindle that fire. We declare once again, baptize us, oh God, ignite in us, oh God, awaken the spirit of this fire that we may go out there, Lord, and begin to show a world truly that, Lord, you still heal, that you still restore, that your kingdom, yes, is coming, that your will, yes, can be done on earth amidst corruption, perversion, compromise, that, Lord, you are building a people called the Ecclesia. We thank you. We bless your holy name today. We declare that we are persuaded. Paul said, I am more than persuaded that neither life nor death nor angel nor peril, sword, whatever it is that can separate me from the love of God. We thank you that we are rooted today in your love. We are rooted today in your mercy. We are rooted today in your grace. We are rooted today in your righteousness. We are rooted today in holiness. We are rooted today in wholeness because that's what holiness means. Wholeness to be complete in Christ. We are rooted today in your will, in your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We declare in the name of Jesus uh, that we will not back down. We are going forward. Uh, we are proceeding further. We are coming to the heel of the Lord. He said in the last day, the mountain of the temple of the, of the, of the house of the Lord will be established uh, as the chief among the mountains. And people will say, Hallelujah, come let us go up uh, in the name of Jesus to the mountain of the house of the God of Jacob. We rise this day and we declare we are that mountain that is been established. Uh, we've been built upon Christ, our rock of ages, uh, that no matter the storm, the wind uh, that is blowing, the flood, uh, yes, that is raging, we are solidly built. Uh, Christ, our eternal rock. Christ, our eternal rock. Christ, our eternal rock, the rock of all ages. The ages of AI. The ages of algorithm, the ages of the robotic life, the ages, yes, of, of deception, the ages ah, of perversion, the ages of falsehood, the ages of idolatry, the ages ah, of paganism, the ages where Asian demons have been awakened. The ages where men are worshipping the moon. Worshipping the planets. The ages when men are worshipping self. We declare Christ is our rock. And we receive this the strength. The strength of a rock. We receive the strength of the rock. The rock that will penetrate the forehead of the Goliath of our day. We rise up as a Davidic generation. Thank you Spirit of God. As we undress ourselves. Yes, from the garment of Saul, we declare we will go forth, representing your intentions and counsel. May your kingdom come. May your will be done this morning. We hallow your name from the rising of the sun till the going down of the same. We proclaim the name of Yahweh. Let it be hallowed. The name of our God. Let it be mighty upon our lips. Sir. We sing your praise and we declare nothing can stop this church. You are building an ecclesia in the earth. Thank you, Father, for corporateness. We take our place. We find our place in the corporate body, in the church, in the oneness of truth and oneness of church. One faith, one love, one baptism, 
We thank you this morning, oh God. Yes, that we are part of the body of Christ across the earth. We find our place. We are not jilted. We do not feel disenfranchised. We do not feel disadvantaged. We are connected, oh God, to the church in, in Zimbabwe, in Malawi. We are connected to the church, yes, Lord, in Congo, Brazzaville. We are connected to the church, yes, Lord, uh, in Congo. Yes, we are connected to the church in the name of Jesus. In Swaziland, yes, in, in, in Swatini. We are connected to the church, yes, in Egypt, in Liberia. We are connected to the church in the name of Jesus in Cameroon we are connected to the church in Brazil yes Lord in Ivory Coast we are connected to the church in the name of Jesus in Fiji Island uh, yes we are connected to the church in China we are connected to the underground church yes in North Korea we are connected to the church oh God in Japan we are connected to the church in Australia we are connected to your church Lord in America in Europe in the name of Jesus in France we are connected to the church of the living God in the Philippines uh, we are connected to the church of the living God we are connected to the global church we are part of the global church there is nothing the enemy can do to stop us we are one we share life with our brothers we share grace with our sisters we declare in Jesus name you are building your church corporately globally locally individually as a home as a family as individuals, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, we take our place and we declare we rise up as a mighty army of the Lord that cannot be stopped. We are unstoppable. This fire cannot be quenched. Yes, we ignite this fire. We connect our fire. Yes, fire to fire. Yes, flame to flame. We become in the name of Jesus, a mighty furnace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. Come, we declare Maranatha. All glory. Friends, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. This is who we are. Be strong. In the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let the might of God continue to enable you, empower you, and reach you today and forever. Proclaim the blessings of God upon your sister, upon your brother. Pray for your sister that is watching. Pray for your brother, whoever that comes to mind. Proclaim them. Mention them before the Lord. Call their name. Call their name. Call their name. Declare Priscilla. Declare Tina. Declare, yes. Proclaim their name. Declare their name. Call their name. What, whichever name comes to your mind say it, declare them remember them before the Lord lift up the name of your home, your family your children, your husband, your wife your, your sister, your brother lift them up in this atmosphere declare them, mention them by name, hallelujah mention them by name, the Lord hears the Lord hears the Lord hears, come on, let's do this before we go, oh Father I thank you Labash Cambradobo Sunday Come on, declare these things. Proclaim these things. Steer their hearts wherever they are. They can hear you. Their spirit can pick. In the name of Jesus, come on. Be a strength. Be a sucker to somebody this day. Come on. Yes, be a, be a pillar to somebody this morning. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray for the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name for what you're doing in your church globally. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for a church emerging. Yes, Lord. We shift away from the church. Yes, that man has built to the one that you are building. The one that you are building cannot be compromised. The one, the church you are building cannot be corrupt, cannot be polluted. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Spirit of the Lord. We are part of that church. We lift up that church. We bless your name, Lord. Continue to judge the house of wickedness. Continue to judge, oh God, the false house. The one who prophesy when you have not sent them. Them, uh, Lord we bless your name for a glorious day like this a time like this a moment like this to share a time of prayer and intercession oh God yes Lord for leaders all across the body of Christ yes the fivefold ministry we pray for apostles prophets in the name of Jesus yes pastors evangelists teachers we pray for them uh, we pray for workers we pray for 
uh, those in the office of administration, we pray for them uh, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the ministry of healing, healing gifts, healing grace, healing water. We thank you, Lord, for divine provision, fountain of life. We thank you for the ministry that will establish your people. Thank you, Lord, for the ministry of teachers, oh God, sound teachers that will bring a balance, that will bring a balance to the body. We bless your name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, once again for touching my eyes. Thank you, Lord, for the perfection of the healing of my eyes. I thank you. Thank you for the things that you're doing. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for a reversal, a correction. Thank you, Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your word stands final. Yes, yes. Your testimony stands final. I thank you, Spirit of God, for all that you're doing. As Lord, we minister healing to people all across. Yes, who have problem with eyes and ears, whatever problem they may have. Healing to them, Lord. As I, as I release this healing, oh God, I also receive it for myself. I thank you. I bless your holy name. For divine provision, oh God, to complete this mission, this work, this, this project, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that it's not an abandoned project. Thank you, Lord, that you will minister to people across the world, wherever they are, oh God, to be a blessing to us. In the name of Jesus, I bless your name. I give you glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord, for those that you have used to be a blessing. Thank you, Lord, that indeed they will not lose. Yes, Lord. Uh, yes, they are rewarded in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for stirring their hearts, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for favoring them. Thank you for opening doors for everyone who have given, who have been a blessing to this project of my office studio. I thank you this morning for their life. I pray for them, Lord. You bless them. You increase them. They will step into their inheritance. But I also thank you for those that you'll be stirring their heart right now. To say, how can we be a blessing? How can I increase my gift? How can I bless you more? What can I do? What can we do? I thank you, Father. Honor and glory to your name. Thank you, Lord, for a generation who are passionate for your word. Who are passionate for the things of your kingdom. Who are passionate particularly for your word. Yes. Who are, who are, who are bookworm when it comes to the word of God who love your word, who study your word, who meditate upon your word day and night. Indeed, they will be blessed in all they do. I thank you, Father. Thank you for all our children, wherever they are this morning. Our grandchildren, our children, we pray for them. We proclaim the blessings of heaven upon their life. We proclaim the blessings of heaven upon their life. We proclaim the blessings of heaven. Yes, Yes, intensive memory, creativity in the name of Jesus, grace, protection. Yes, sound, sound mind, oh God, in the name of Jesus, discipline they have in Jesus' name. We thank you for their lives. Everyone, wherever they are across the globe, we pray for them. The, the goodness of God, the mercies of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue to abide. Continue to abide with them. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. Thank you for answering our prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you for the spirit of prophecy welling up in the hearts, in the hearts of men. Thank you, Lord, that the soul is brought under, yes, the, govern, the governance of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, that the kingdom, the kingdom of the soul comes under the authority, yes, of your spirit. We thank you. We bless your name. Thank you, O oh God, for good, goodness and mercy. Yes, that will continue to follow us all the days of our life. I thank you, Lord, that we are refreshed today. We are renewed, empowered, energized. Thank you, Lord, that every satanic, demonic activity is gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Spirit of God. Every satanic, demonic activity gone in Jesus' name. Thank you. Your people receive once again. Yes, soundness of mind. That heaviness is gone. That burden is gone. Let this weekend be a time of peace and rest for you. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Yes, that satanic oppression is gone. That demonic oppression is gone. In the name of Jesus, you under the sound of my voice, you are healed in Jesus' name. You are restored in Jesus' name. You are renewed in Jesus' name. Reformed in Jesus' name. I, I bind your mind, soul, and body to the same power of God's word. I declare this day, I severe from you every ungodliness, every satanic imposition, every demonic activity in 
whatever area of your life right now, they cannot stay. I cast down in the name of Jesus every item that exalts itself above the knowledge of God in your life. We bring them on on that divine subjugation in Jesus' name. I say be established in the word of his grace. Be established in the counsels of God. Be established in truth. Be established in mercy. Be established in the love of God. Let the favor of God surround you and clothe you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, this word has gone forth. It will not return empty. This word will accomplish what you have ordained it for. Thank you, Spirit of God, for, yes, this beautiful day. Thank you. We we bless your name for the things that you have done, for the things that you're going to do. We bless your name that your will is prospering in our lives and through our lives. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory, glory, glory. It's a beautiful day of glory. Thank you, Spirit of, Spirit of God, for your counsel. Light is shining in every form of darkness, in every dark alley of our life. Light has come. Light is shining. You turn on the lights this morning. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to our Father. He's worthy of praise. Amen and amen. It is done to the glory of God. Amen and amen. Well, we are done this morning. Thank you so very much, everyone, for being part of this broadcast. Yes, stirred by the spirit of prophecy. And thank everybody that's joined us this morning, Sister Kumisa, Sister Tina, Sister uh, um, Priscilla. Thank you, everyone. And those who are watching us from uh, our various platforms, all right, that we're not, are not able to, you know, you know, to, you know, to, send a comment if you want to send a comment please do all right just connect with us subscribe to our, uh, our youtube channel i'm sure you should be able to do that all right thank you really appreciate this time uh, of prayer this time of you know just allowing god to wash us to cleanse us you know to minister to us in the atmosphere of his word so many powerful things has been highlighted this morning Please don't forget this thing. You want to, amen, go back again and rehearse some of the things, if not all the things that we've said this morning. And of course, our teachings, amen, on uh, 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 um, the release of the apostolic spirit, all right? Uh, apostolic architecture. What a time the spirit of God, amen, has been leading us, you know, through for, for a while. Now, I tell you, you want to allow those words to sink deep, getting to know what mission, amen, and who is a missionary, amen, is, Particularly when you deal with the concept of the apostolic. I thank God for the way the Lord, amen, has been speaking to us. Enriching our lives, enriching our spirit with new words, with fresh words. Right? And I thank God for the way the Spirit of God led us, you know, uh, at the beginning of this broadcast. Showing us a pattern, amen, from the concept of, you know, uh, uh, um, the Passover, Pentecost. And of course, moving into, I just like that phrase. I like that because that's not part of what I thought about. It's just the spirit of God. Amen. Uh, and I, that stood out for me. Right. So please, let's continue to, to, to just engage, amen, the atmosphere of God's word. Amen. Whatever you're doing today, make sure, amen, that you live in the ambience, in the presence of God and just enjoy your weekend. God bless you. Thank you so very much, everyone. We'll see you by God's grace tomorrow. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Love you all. Bye-bye.